When I first arrived here, I really didn't know much at all about cenotes or cave diving at all. Almost 30 years later, I'm still here today, hooked uh, by everything that we've been able to discover about the aquifer. The mission of SINDAC is fairly simple. We are here to facilitate the scientific study of the aquifer of our region. Our work focuses on the east coast of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, uh, where we find some of the longest caves on planet Earth, and they're all underwater. Our work is important because it helps us understand the vital importance of water in this region. Water is really the thing that connects all living things on Earth, and our job is to go in there, document it, and understand that medium better. And that, to me, is the most important aspect of our work at SINDAC. I think that over the years, uh, the focus of our diving has, has changed uh, quite a bit, actually, where we solely had an exploration focus before. In the last two years, we've really reached a point in our data management system and our geographic information system where those two pieces are starting to mesh together. And slowly, what is going to come out of that is a better ability for us uh, to transmit this data to a wider audience. Truth be told, I feel extremely privileged to get to see those underwater caves. And the reason why I feel privileged about it is that we can have the impression nowadays that there is no more terra incognita, no more unknown land on Earth. I think interest in uh, any environment sort of changes over the years, but as the years go by, I think the details become very interesting and, and more the questions of, you know, why is this the way it is? And, and, and also uh, an understanding of, of how important these caves are and how unique they are. And uh, when we try to uh, really film an underwater cave, there's really very, very little moving in the environment. It's, a, it's a, an environment that's been really untouched and stable for thousands of years and not much lives in there so you know it's, it's, it's quite fixed. The most important aspect of it for us as a team really is safety. We need to be able to count on the equipment we're using. And therefore, I would say that reliability is the most important feature, because if I'm using a scooter on the way in, I need to be fairly certain that that scooter is still going to be available to me on the way out. We can have a device that is powered for 300 minutes, uh, have ranges of up to 6,000 meters uh, of penetration from the point of entry. So that's 6,000 meters in, and you do your work and then 6,000 meters to come back out of the cave and on a repetitive basis. We quite often leave DPVs in the cave as safety DPVs for six weeks. That's the luxuries that we have now with you know, 300 minute plus burn time on a lithium battery pack. The primary reason we use the scooters is to get to places where we couldn't get or to bring equipment that we couldn't bring into the cave. Used wisely, it can also add safety to the dive because we will be less tired when we're doing certain job, because we can bring extra scooters in case something happens. But I'm not going to deny the pleasure I have in driving and piloting through those caves.
if we want to film this environment uh, to a high level of quality, it requires quite a bit of camera equipment and that's quite big and bulky and to move that, all of that equipment through the water uh, would be really next to impossible swimming. The water and, and, and the camera mounted to a scooter in the water can really uh, bring that to new dimensions. The scooters allow us now with the zero frame to capture images that are smooth and sleek and beautiful and take people into this otherwise inaccessible world with us. It's quite challenging to, you know, film other divers underwater and a desire to, to really capture the cave with divers scootering through it and therefore the camera had to go along with them. So with the camera drove and tried to keep at the same speed of the divers in front. Just adjusting the speed control while driving and just trying to frame them up perfectly and then, you know, anticipating where they're going to be next and get up ahead by increasing the speed and, you know, allow them to come in and, and through the frame as I slow down the scooter and, you know, I could imagine in the editing room fading to black and artistically create an image and, you know, with movement in it and, and the DPV really, you know, allows us to do that. It was uh, quite obvious and we made that transition to Suex Scooter at a very early stage. So I can say that we've tried every single one of their DPVs has been a tremendous uh, relationship and a tremendous uh, tool for us to use and I think partly it's because uh, Suex uh, and, and specifically Alessandro are divers and uh, understand uh, exploration, understand research, understand underwater work and are willing to actually just uh, listen to the divers, to the people that are actually using DPVs and to make uh, modification or to take some of their ideas in order to improve their products. I think here on, on a yearly basis we're probably collectively spending hundreds of kilometers on those DPVs and uh, not saying that they never have problems but it's very rare that those problems occur so for us it's, it's really a workhorse uh, in and out every day of the water and more importantly, it enables us uh, to do the work that we need to do underwater. And this is absolutely key to research uh, in and around here. A lot of people might ask, well, why do you do this? And, and for us, I think it's clear that the information that we uh, are able to generate and the data we're able to generate and the maps and the overall picture of the aquifer here uh, allows people to take a good look at what's happening at the surface and relate it to what's happening uh, beneath. There are a lot of threats that present themselves to the aquifer here. Certainly I'd say the two primary threats are those of sewage and solid waste. Potentially, it can affect the, the, the amount of water that comes in that isn't absorbed naturally by trees if they're removed. So there's a lot of impacts and I think Fred, Chris and I, particularly since we've been here for almost 30 years, we have seen such deterioration of the environment here and I think that only reinforces our belief in what we do.